this. I'm trying to focus this thing and my hand keeps getting in the shot. I need like a remote control focus in my hand way back here so it doesn't get in the shot. This thing is so wide. Hi everyone and welcome to Palda Tech. This is the new Seven Artisans 4mm f2.8 lens for Fujifilm's X-mount and we are talking serious wide angle here. Before I continue, a disclaimer. Seven Artisans did send me this lens for consideration to be reviewed on this channel. However, just like always, this review is my own opinion and Seven Artisans had absolutely no input into the creation of this video. In fact, I've had this lens for quite a while and I think that they probably figured that I forgot all about it. Nevertheless, they are seeing this video for the very first time, just as all of you are, and I am not being paid to do this review. The very first thing I saw when I opened up the box was actually one of the nicer sets of instructions that I've ever seen for a third-party lens. Usually, I notice that lens instructions are more of an afterthought. They often look like something that's been cheap photocopy printed. However, these instructions had color photos, helpful diagrams, and call-out labels. This is actually a nice touch, and I hope to see that more third-party lens companies are doing this and putting a little extra attention into their instructions. On the lens itself, the first thing I noticed is the aperture ring stick that's there for you to adjust the aperture more easily. It's located pretty much toward the bottom of the lens when the lens is mounted on the camera, and you can remove it if you want to. There is no lens filter size for this lens, and that's pretty much because you're not going to be putting a filter on this lens. Have a look at how much this lens protrudes right out. In fact, because of this protrusion, right? They had to provide a special lens cap that's deep enough to protect it. The lens is all metal construction and the entire unit feels solid and well built. Now the aperture range is 16 millimeters all the way to f 2.8 millimeters. There are seven diaphragm blades in the aperture. Now I found the aperture ring to be slightly on the tighter side but that's really no problem because to turn it you have this little aperture ring stick right here which makes it a lot easier. I'll tell you something if they didn't include this I would not really enjoy turning this aperture ring but this does make a huge difference. It is of of course, a manual focus lens with a minimum focus distance of 8.5 centimeters. Now the focus ring is slightly wider than the aperture ring, but it is definitely a bit tighter than I would prefer. I'll tell you something, wherever you decide to set your focus, this ring will not accidentally slip out of focus. That's for sure. Now the rear of the lens is equipped with Fujifilm's X mount, but just to be clear, this is an all manual lens. It does not have electrical contact points. Because of this, you're going to want to be sure that you go into your menu and make sure that shoot without lens is turned on. Otherwise, the shutter release button is not going to work with this or any other manual lens that doesn't have electrical contact points. The lens contains 10 elements in eight groups. The lens weighs in at 201 grams. This lens retails for about $150 and provides a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent of six millimeters field of view. Now, when you're dealing with a lens that is this wide, you are going to have noticeable distortion. And with this lens, we are talking about some very serious fisheye. In fact, you can actually get a wider than 180 degree angle of view as this lens has a 225 degree angle of view. And because of this, unless you actively pay attention to where you're shooting, you are absolutely guaranteed to get your hand, your head, your feet, your legs, and everything else in the shot. In fact, I was pretty much holding the <laughs> the camera out like this while I was shooting most of the time because pretty much you're in the shot if you do this. So I was like, you know, holding it out trying to do that. Now what's interesting and what I love so much about this lens is the minimum focus distance of 8.5 centimeters. And when you combine that with a wider aperture, you can get some nice background with this lens. Now one thing that I recommend you do if you plan on using this lens is to set your manual focus assist to focus peak highlights. So go into your menu into AFMF where it says MF assist and change that to focus peak highlight. I'm gonna go ahead and choose red high as I rotate the focus ring. But you can see how the focus peak highlight can really help you pinpoint what part of the shot you wanna get in focus. Look at this, I'm trying to focus this thing and my hand keeps getting in the shot. I need like a remote control focus in my hand way back here so it doesn't get in the shot. Now, I don't think you can talk about image quality with this lens the same way you can with say the 35 millimeter F2 Fujinon lens. I guess that's a nice way of saying that you buy this lens for its ultra wide angle and dramatic distortion 
distortion and not for its stunning and spectacular image quality. That being said, I was impressed with the image quality of this lens, particularly at the price point of $150. Now, one thing I did notice was that around the perimeter, there is often a blue border. You notice it right here? Now, obviously you can zoom in and crop that out with no problem, but that is something to be aware of. Now, as I mentioned before, one thing I absolutely love about this lens is the minimum focus distance. Have a look at this photo of a tiny clay pot that's for a turtle to go in as a house. And notice how I was able to easily focus in on the small plant in front and yet still have a nicer background. Here's another shot taken at f2.8. Notice how I was able to get this area right here of the image in focus and yet completely blur out the rest of the background. And once again, notice how you do have that blue border going around the side of the image. Again, you'd obviously want to crop that out. Now where this lens really shines would be to take something that's already a little weird and make it even weirder with that ultra wide angle. Take for example, Halloween. Now you've all seen shots of pumpkins in front of porches or in front of homes and that sort of thing, but have a look at this. And obviously you can crop in and get some really interesting perspectives. One of the best tips I can tell you about using a lens like this is make sure that when you're shooting with it, put something in the foreground really close to the camera and then something interesting kind of off in the background at an angle. Because the distortion of the item in front and the ability to kind of have that other item in the back can make for some very very interesting shots. I do recommend getting this lens, particularly if you're stuck in a creative rut and you're looking for something to sort of jumpstart you back into shooting again, but with a different perspective. This lens will absolutely bring out some very interesting shots, even with the most mundane of subjects. Or if you generally need an ultra wide angle four millimeter lens for astrophotography, perhaps architecture in some form, or heck, if you just wanna try something really different and a lot of fun for your Fujifilm camera, this is a really fun lens. I think Seven Artisans did a great job on this lens, and I definitely think it's worthy of putting on your holiday wish list for the year if you like shooting in that focal length. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you all again very soon in a new video. Take care.